Hi, everyone. My name is Kirby Linville. I work with, for a company called Accenture. Um, I actually work in our labs organization, which is the R&D arm of Accenture. Um, today, I'm going to be talking to you about a collaboration we did between uh, Biogen, ourselves, and a company called OneQubit to actually implement a quantum application for one of our clients. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Accenture is a large professional services and consulting company. We have over 400,000 employees spread across 120 countries with broad and deep expertise in more than 40 different industries. So we have a lot of consultants that work for us. Our labs is considerably smaller. We have seven locations spread across the world, uh, five R&D groups within uh, those locations. We publish one tech vision report every year, which uh, is a report that highlights the state of technology as we see it affecting large uh, organizations. Accenture Labs itself is responsible for incubating and prototyping uh, projects for our clients with new and emerging technologies. We, per, uh, we participate in what we call applied R&D. So this means that the R&D projects we work on have to uh, generate some kind of business value for our clients. So we don't tend to work on actually building quantum computers. We instead partner with the companies that do and some of the companies that write software on top of them and work on getting those or getting that software implemented for our clients. We see quantum computing as a potentially transformative uh, technology. Uh, in fact, with our partners, OneQubit, we've mapped out about 150 different use cases uh, in which we think uh, quantum computing can make an impact to businesses at large in the coming years. Uh, these 150 use cases are actually mapped out against uh, quantum annealer, uh, which is something that D-Wave produces. Uh, there's even more use cases that can be mapped out against gate model computers like the ones that Rigetti produces. I'm not going to talk too much about the different use cases other than today I'll be talking about a health and life sciences use case. We're going to be talking about uh, simulating molecule or comparing molecules for pharmaceutical drug discovery purposes. Um, but the point I want to make here is that the use cases we mapped out are spread across different industries and operating groups. So while we see quantum computing having the largest impact in uh, the materials and life sciences industries like Rick was talking about, um, quantum computing does have the potential to provide us with better solutions, which can really deliver business value to our clients across all these industries. So I'm going to dive in now and start talking about our use case. Uh, the company we partnered with, Biogen, is a pharmaceutical company um, that's recognized as a biotechnology innovator and leader in pharmaceutical uh, research and drug discovery. One of Biogen's core um, problems that they try to tackle is to treat neurological and neurodegenerative diseases. As you can imagine, um, Biogen is seeking to find technology that can help them accelerate, accelerate this process. The process is currently very expensive and very time consuming. So even a short savings can save Biogen a lot of money in the long run and can get more effective uh, drugs to market faster. And this is really our goal as Accenture is to help empower Biogen. The problem that comes up is it takes pharmaceutical companies up to 10 plus years and billions of dollars to actually develop a new drug. This is a, a huge strain on resources for today's uh, pharmaceutical companies. In addition, companies today are limited in the um, degree of simulation that they can actually do in terms of how molecules will react and in figuring out how, sim how similar two molecules are. The example we use is uh, for some of its drugs, Biogen is looking to find compounds that can easily penetrate the blood-brain barrier. They have some uh, sample molecules that they know do this well, so they want to find other molecules similar to that so that they can create new drugs based off of the properties that they know about their existing drugs. Unfortunately, classical computers today are limited in the size of molecules that they can actually compare effectively. There's some methods we have of getting around this limitation, uh, but they only give us a best guess. What we're looking at is developing an application that allows Biogen to do this more accurately. Uh, this is essentially the problem we took a look at in collaboration with Biogen and OneQubit. 
Um, traditionally, fingerprinting, uh, 2D fingerprinting methods are used to compare graph similarities because they're very easy to compute, but they don't really give you a good holistic picture of what's going on and why the two molecules match. For this application, we uh, took the tact of creating a graph-based molecular uh, similarity comparison. The advantage of the graph-based similarity method is that you can do topological comparisons between the two molecules, which gives you better insight into, um, or really gives you better results with matching molecules, and it gives you better insights into why those two molecules matched. The reason why this isn't done traditionally in a classical computer is that it is a NP-hard problem. However, with a quantum computer, uh, we can run approximations, better approximations in a more reasonable amount of time. So that's the benefit of actually using quantum computers. I'm not going to talk too much more in detail about this process itself. If you are interested, you can learn more about it at OneQubit's website. Uh, they have white papers and research papers. The white paper this applies to is a novel graph-based approach for determining molecular similarity. And so they have a few papers out there detailing how this process actually works and how they break it down. Uh, in addition, I do want to mention that we did run this uh, as a study and compared the results against the classical method that are used today. Uh, we found that this graph comparison approach gave similar results to the fingerprinting approach um, while providing Biogen's uh, uh, Biogen's chemists with more insight into why the two molecules matched. The, our original research was based off of this paper down here below, Optimal Assignment Methods for Ligand-Based Virtual Screening. Um, we are planning on putting out a paper with the results of what we did, but that's in the works, so stay tuned. This is a couple screenshots of an uh, application that we actually created for Biogen. What I want to highlight here is that if you notice, there's nothing that refers to quantum computing up there at all. Uh, the chemists simply put in the molecules they want to compare. They note which features are important. And then they note the, uh, they put in a set of weights denoting how important each of those features are. The results that are spat out include a visualization and uh, what's called shared traits. So the chemist can take a look at these results and see, OK, we got a molecule that's 80% similar, but why is it 80% similar? Is it similar in a way that's useful for us? Um, so the, the real benefit of creating an application like this is that it allows these chemists to make use of quantum computers and the improved methods that quantum computing offers without having to be quantum computing experts. This is an area that we as Accenture are very interested in. Uh, I'm going to start wrapping up now, um, but this is a slide that we show to most of our clients where we recommend that our clients start preparing for quantum computing now. Uh, as you heard from Rick, we're not at quantum supremacy yet. Anything we can do on a quantum computer can be simulated more efficiently right now on a classical computer. However, that barrier is coming up very quickly. As we're, and, um, the impact of being able to use quantum computing uh, can be huge for some of our clients. So for this uh, reason, we're actually uh, recommending that all our clients, or many of our clients, start learning about quantum computing now and putting in action plans so that they're ready whenever quantum computing becomes feasible for their use cases. One of the major steps we recommend is that they actually start building these quantum-ready applications on top of hardware agnostic interfaces. We advocate for uh, building applications that aren't tied to a D-Wave machine or aren't tied to a D-Wave machine with 2,000 qubits. The benefit here is that as more advanced hardware comes uh, into play, our clients can simply swap in that more powerful quantum computer. Uh, this is the roadmap that we uh, like to show. And so finally, I want to leave you all with the message that we work to drive home with our clients. And that is that um, enterprises and really all of us in this room uh, need to be prepared uh, for quantum to come because there are some uh, huge transformative impacts that quantum can bring. Thank you very much. Uh, you can learn more about our activities with quantum computing at Accenture.com slash quantum. And if you want to follow up with me, you can contact me at kirby.j.linville at Accenture.com.